because today is the day the Cardinals finish close or last in every major list available. CBS Sports reporting or ranking Jonathan Gannon, the 31st ranked head coach in the NFL. Now, a lot of publications, Bo, come out and say new head coaches who have not coached a game yet, rightfully so, are put off to the side until we have some data or some win-loss records. No, no, no. Shane Stetchen's broke ass is like in the, the <laughs> low 20s. And I'm sorry, Shane Stetchen is not as hot of a head coach in Canada as Jonathan Gannon. They've got Josh McDaniels 30 right above Gannon. I mean, just what do you make of these rankings and are they warranted in your opinion? Yeah, that, that, that's the strange thing, right? You would have thought that they were going to lump kind of the unknowns together, but they didn't. They put Steichen down the list. They put D'Amico Ryans down the list. All the first-year head coaches did. didn't get the benefit of the doubt like Jonathan Gannon, and you're starting to read through it, and here, here's why. They don't know what they're talking about, right? As far as what the write-up was at CBS.com ranking Jonathan Gannon, the second-lowest-ranked head coach in the NFL, just uh, ahead of Matt Eberflus, which is uh, yikes, Bears fans, but uh, he called him a passive. <laughs> defensive approach that JG's got a passive defense of approach and you can ask any Philly fans about that it's just like well that's because they don't know they're mostly casuals and they're they're fired up still about the Super Bowl and they're angry it just they're just angry that, that's an angry yeah. fan base you if if being passive is racking up sacks and picks then I, I I'd love to be passive 70 sacks 17 interceptions 27 total, total turnovers that's a passive defense I don't think so. It doesn't sound very passive to me. So that's wrong. It's a bad breakdown. And then you've got a barren roster for years. That's what he called the Arizona Cardinals. And I just don't see that as well. I mean, that's not going to be the case once the 2024 offseason gets underway and, and, and the Cardinals navigate that in another year of Monty Ossifor. I just don't understand how you can look at this with 11 draft picks in 2024 and, you know, staring down $80 million in cap space that you're going to say this roster is barren for years. It's just, it's just lazy and it's just, I don't think that they put any thought into it and they're just going off of rea you know, the reaction overreaction from the end of the Super Bowl. Yeah. And I think it's the Florio effect, right? Or this, this news about Jonathan Gannon and potentially blowing the Super Bowl that stays in people's minds fair or not. And it, and it causes some of these media outlets to run with it and create false narratives over the course of the off season when really all that matters is can they get by them from their players and inevitably win football games? I mean, Mike, I, I counted just now like five coaches ahead of Jonathan Gannon who were basically primed to get fired this year. Oh, and, yeah. And that starts with like guys like Ron Rivera. We mentioned Josh McDaniels. I mean, there are a bunch of coaches, guy out in San Diego that, that or excuse me, the Las Vegas uh, or LA Chargers, I should say. Arthur um, Smith, there's a bunch of, Bulls, yeah. Dennis there's a bunch Allen, of coaches that, that are not going to be on that list next year. And like, I don't know what kind of year Jonathan Gannon's going to have. The Cardinals could pick first overall next year. I mean, like Zach Taylor, who I was not a big fan of, had back-to-back -back miserable seasons, and then went to the Super Bowl because he had the right quarterback, right? And I, until until Jonathan Gannon, I'm not going to say punt on this year because I think they need to show that they're competitive and prepared. Something Kingsbury's teams could not do is one of the most frustrating aspects of watching Cliff last fall is like they didn't even look like they practiced all week. And I'm like, Bo, you're at practice every day. Can you confirm that they actually worked out as a team? Because it looked like the opposite. That's what you need from getting. It's like, oh, I see a vision here. Now, you may not have the talent to execute it, but I, I see what you're going for. Until Jonathan Gannon gets the benefit of a healthy Kyler Murray for a long stretch or Caleb Williams type of prospect, I don't. I think the jury's going to stay out on Jonathan Gannon. It's the same thing people say about Robert Sala. Robert Sala is a really good defensive head coach, but can be a great head coach, head coach. Well, now they have Aaron Rodgers. So now they can see that come to fruition. What did that take? That took two years. But I, I happen to think, we're going to get an answer on Gannon sooner rather than later. I Again, we've, we've talked about the comparisons, Bo, of the 2021 Eagles team and this Cardinal team, whereas like, he's going to fall on the sword defensively for the offense, hopefully to, to have some success here. So the defense, I expect to struggle early on, right? And it could also be the offense struggling. But by the end of the year, November, December, like the defense all look pretty good with, with or without new additions or trades or cuts or whatever. The vision of Gannon and his 4 3 3 4 defense and the pass rush and the turnovers. I expect to get some resolution on that before the end of the year. Yeah, you should. And, and I think that they have a pretty good idea of where they want to fit these players, how they want to use, utilize the versatility of players that I don't think the previous regime had a good plan for, right? The Zayvon yeah. Collins is the Isaiah Simmons of this defense. 
and then you bring into you know some some free agents, some draft picks, uh, and how they want to utilize Ujolari and, and some of these guys that are going to be part of this pass rush, this, this front seven. So yeah. I, I think with that, you're just you probably will see a team that's not going to finish second most points allowed, even with them not up to snuff roster wise on the defensive side of the football. Yeah, uh, this is a good question. We've seen this before. AK deadline. Uh, where can we buy, or why can't we buy the new black alternative jerseys? And we've had this posed a couple different times. Deadline. My theory is that. They have had the black jerseys, the old black jerseys for sale, and they've been the prominent item for Cardinal fans to buy because the red and white have been so hideous, right? I think they are giving the red and white time to breathe, and I think maybe closer to when the Cardinals plan to break them out during the season is when they'll unveil them. But I, the, the red and white prior Reebok Nike jerseys were so grotesque. They're allowing these new red and white, which, I mean, the, the red's good. The white is fantastic. The white will be my next jersey, jersey purchase. They're letting them breathe because that's their traditional home and away colors. And then let's say they they're going to go all they're going to go all black in like early October. Then you might see those go for sale, but they'll they'll make them available. You'll have plenty of time because buckle up. It took twenty plus years to get new jerseys. These are these are them for the long haul. They're here to stay for a while. Excited about that. Did you did you see yeah. this another storyline kind of around this organization that the NFL is blaming the slipping issues on the Super Bowl teams? And not the turf out there at State <laughs> Stadium. Well, the, the turf god, or what was his name? The sod father. The, the sod father. They sent him out to pasture, so to speak. He was the sacrificial lamb of the Super Bowl. I hope he's doing all right, but nice of Goodell to put him on the players. Wasn't he like yeah. in his, he's in his late 80s, early 90s. That guy's going to be muttering about how the NFL screwed him. <laughs> and his, last, his swan song, they screwed him, and they're just throwing yeah. him under the it's like you had Hassan Reddick that played in the stadium for four seasons, and he was like, it was the worst turf I'd ever played on. Like, he played on the, the State Farm and University of Phoenix sta uh, Stadium's turf for many years, many games. And he's like, no, that's the worst surface I've ever played on on Super I, Bowl. It's insane. I hate, like, ageism is a thing in, in today's working world. But I don't think in the biggest event, sporting event in our country, you should have a 90 year old man prepping the, the playing field. That's just my opinion. You could disagree. You might know a lot of really capable 90 year olds that can sod a field. I do not. And I, that was such a gimmick that backfired too. Cause it's like, this is a great story. He's prepped so many fields. It's like, yeah, let's get an heir apparent. Do you have an heir apparent ready to go? You have somebody, I don't know, in their seventies that can do this. Mr. A hundred year old sod father. Uh, yeah. I mean, not, not surprised. The car, Cardinals, I, the, if, if the Cardinals as if well, but anything to do with gardening or grass or sod, I will, I will step out, out of the way of an of an elderly person. They know what they're doing. They've got a way greener thumb than you and I do. That that's true. I I can't keep a house plant alive for the <laughs> life of me. I, everything in my house is fake.